Oh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Oasis Online. I'm Debbie, and this is my husband Vince, and we're going to be leading. Morning. morning. We're going to be leading you through this morning. So I'm just going to hand over to Vince, and he's going to tell us how it's going to be, how it's going to look like. So good morning, everyone. In a moment, Andy is going to lead us with some worship. Then we will have some stories and uh, some prayer points from people in the life of, of the community. And this week, excitingly, we start our new series on prayer. Uh, that will be, Adrian will bring that to us a bit later. But before we go on, um, let me encourage you to participate as much as you're comfortable with this morning. So you may choose in your own home, as I will do in, in, in our home, to sing or to play an instrument. You may choose equally to just sit and enjoy the morning, however it looks today. Could I encourage you to use the chat to bring encouragements, um, scripture or things that God might be wanting to say to us as a community this morning. If you are using the chat function, please remember to select panelists and attendees. So I think that's basically how the morning's going to look. Uh, just before we move on, I'm going to ask Deb if you just share a pause moment. I'm just going to read a scripture to you um, before we hand over to Andy. And it's a verse in Romans chapter 8. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he's no he no longer loves us? If we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. So before and lead us in worship, I'd just like us just to take a moment to pause to think about that. No matter what is going on in the world, in our nation, even in our own street, Jesus wants to remind us, he loves you, he loves me, he loves us. And if we can grasp that this morning and then enter into worship and just worship the Jesus who loves us, no matter what, he will never, ever let us go. It's like a mother hen with his wings wrapped around us, keeping us safe. So we'll just have a moment to think about that. Jesus loves you, he loves me. And then Andy will lead us in some worship. Yeah. It breaks the power of sin and darkness. His love is mighty and so much stronger. King of glory, the King above all kings. Let's just focus on this. Who breaks the power? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? His love is mighty and so much stronger. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who breaks the power? breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King of Bible kings, who shakes the whole earth, who shakes the whole earth, who drew the thunder, who leaves us breathless in door and wonder. Kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free. 
chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king above all kings let's sing that again who brings our chaos back into order who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter king of glory King above all kings, who rules the nations? Who rules the nations? It's truth and justice shines like the sun, and all of its brilliance. King of glory, King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. Take my place, you will bear my cross, you will lay down your life, and I will be set free. Jesus, we sing for all that you've done for us. Jesus, we sing. Jesus, we sing for.
Drench my soul. Drench my soul. Mercy and grace unfold. I hunger and thirst. I hunger and thirst. With arms stretched wide. With arms stretched wide.
Thank you, Andrew. That was a great time of worship. We've been reminded again, like I said at the beginning, that Jesus had conquered death. And we can say with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain. All power and wisdom and strength is his. Yeah. And he is our father. He loves us with an everlasting love. And because of this, we surrender to him. We want Jesus to become greater and us become less. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want you to have your way in us. Have your way in me. Help us to become less and for you to become greater. We thank you for your amazing love. That no matter what is going on in the world, you love us so much that you gave your only son for us. And we're so grateful and we're so privileged that we know you and we can call you our father. Help us not to forget this and just to just rem remember constantly that no matter what, you've got us and you love us. And we thank you, Jesus, for that. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue now, um, in fact, with a conversation that we started last week. And we're going to hear from a number of different people within the community on 
the, the conversation which was around racial justice and how we can work towards racial justice. So we'll be hearing some stories by way of a video and see how over this last week, people have been impacted by what they've seen, what they've heard, the conversations that they've had and how it's impacted them and what they're doing now or what they're learning in order that change might come about. So let's just watch the video with us. Thank you. I love living in Birmingham. I love that it's a multicultural society and, and I love that my kids have grown up with people from different backgrounds. It's just great. So it's been quite shocking recently to hear stories in the news of the racism people are experiencing and hearing those testimonies last Sunday. People within our community who've had such horrible things said to them because of their race or their colour. It's just wrong. Um, so it's made me much more aware of there being an issue and I just want to become much more informed in that. So the, the events recently just made me think I just need to know more. Um, I want to be much more aware of what's going on for the people around me. So I'm going to continue to have those conversations with my friends um, to, just to try and understand the issues that they face. And then I'm going to inform myself by watching films, documentaries, reading articles. And I think from that place of being educated and better informed, um, I then have an opinion on it so that if I, if I ever have to speak up for somebody, then I know what I'm going to say. Hi, my name's Paul. Just wanted to thank Adrian for asking me to share some thoughts after the preach last Sunday where he covered the events of the death of George Floyd. Um, I've been left for most of the week thinking to myself, well, what now? After all of this, what now? And the answer came in the form of a video that was sent to me, which you can see actually, uh, uh, Oasis Church will arrange for you to be able to get hold of the link. Uh, it was a story of a, a white American policeman that went out to go and deal with an issue regarding a group of black youths. Um, he managed to do that by playing basketball with them and talking to them instead of, talk with, instead of shouting at them and criticizing them uh, and being overly negative with them. Um, the video that was taken went viral, I understand, and then somehow a, uh, a black American a basketball player managed to connect with the policeman and they both went to go and speak to the youth together and the basketball player was able to um, be a good role model to them uh, in a really inspirational way and just took everything to a completely different level. So I stood back from that and I thought to myself, that's the answer to my what now, because we all want to do good. Um, and if we can spot somebody else doing good and we can go and help them, um, you never know. It just might take everything to a different level. Hi, I'm James. For those that might not know me, um, I'm a husband to Laura, daddy to Timothy and Jesse, and um, a head teacher of a very small school. Um, my main learning that I've taken from, um, particularly from church last week and hearing everyone's um, stories, which are really challenging um, and really helpful, um, is that it's not enough to say that you're not racist, because um, actually we all are complicit in the structures in society that perpetuate racism. Um, but we need to be anti-racist. Ways in which I've sought to do that since um, last week are making sure that in my blog people of different skin colours are represented. Um, thinking more carefully about the language and specific words and terminology that I'm using. Um, and trying to hear as many different people's voices as possible and learn from people's experiences and learn how I can do better at actively opposing racism, particularly with the children that I teach at school. Hi, I'm Emma. I'm just going to share a couple of the things that I've been thinking about and trying to reflect on with God um, about the issues of justice and Black Lives Matter that has been going on um, in the world. Firstly, it would be just to allow the emotions you feel that you might not be used to feeling, like allow those emotions to come out and be expressed for me. That is feelings of like needing righteous anger, um, hurt, pain, not understanding, just feeling deeply uncomfortable and 
that that's good like we should feel deeply uncomfortable about this because it's not right um i think we should be allowing ourselves to feel uncomfortable because god's kingdom isn't here yet um that is very apparent and we have work to do and we have prayers to pray to bring justice and bring and be the kingdom um the bible tells us that we are like, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be god called god's children um so what does it look like for us to be peacemakers it sounds like we need to do some action there like it's not just something we receive but something that we are called to do to be peacemakers um and another thing is for me and um, one of my best friends and my housemates is um, a black woman an amazing woman um so asking her, her and sitting with her and feeling comfortable in that um and having those difficult conversations um and asking her like how can i help make space for you and your emotions and all this like seeing how it's affected her and the real trauma that black people carry because of all of this um asking her questions like what do you need from me um and being prepared to listen and act on that and finally i'd say for white people privileged people the real challenge for myself and i think for all of us is to be helpful and not heard um are our actions and the way that we are talking about this from a place of us wanting to be heard to absolve us of some sort of sense of guilt we might feel um or are they actions where we're trying to really be helpful and not just heard for now whilst it's in the media and in the news um but ways of us being helpful and making real lasting change um for our brothers and sisters and to bring god's kingdom Thank you to everyone who shared those powerful stories. This is a moment for us to examine our own hearts. And we're going to just have a, a two minute um, time of prayer together. There's going to be um, some prayer points that are going to come up in a minute. I would encourage you just in your own homes to have a look at those prayer points and just spend a bit of time praying about them and then we will come back there'll be a timer and then we'll come back together um, and carry on with our service adrian. yeah adrian will be um following on from that with our talk on prayer
Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 21. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Hi friends, it is so good to be with you again on a nearly sunny Sunday morning and my hope is that all that I get to share in this moment from my home, whether it's live that you're hearing it in this moment or uh, in a different moment on demand, will bring some encouragement to you in your home. And we're going to, in a few minutes time, just look at these verses that Becca has just read out from Ephesians 3. Um, as they're going to be the launch pad into this new series that we start today uh, called Living Prayer. Uh, but before we look at those verses, I just want to kind of do a quick intro in terms of this series as we want to look at this series Living Prayer as our desire is that we would, as a family of believers, or maybe you're someone who's just looking in saying, what does it really mean then to be a follower of Jesus? Is that for each of us, we discover more of what it means to live lives that are seeking to be shaped by prayer. Because as we live lives that are shaped by prayer, it then becomes a life that we then get to reveal to others around us. You see, we're living in an unprecedented moment where we discover that people are longing to understand how to pray. Uh, I don't know if you came across this uh, kind of research paper that was done in uh, Copenhagen University where they have looked over the past couple of months of uh, Google searches on the word prayer, um, just at the height of the pandemic that we've been living through. And, and in it, they discovered that in 95 countries, the word prayer was the highest searched word ever recorded in terms of that word prayer. It's something that people are longing to understand more about, are longing to, to say there has to be something here. But also, we have to look into this nation. If you were to look a few weeks back in terms of the Guardian newspaper, it ran a headline is that one in four people at the moment in this country are turning to prayer. Therefore, in this moment, I believe we have an opportunity of modeling something of what it means to live with prayer at the center of our being what it looks like to seek to pray. I also believe that this is a moment where God is calling us as his people to take more of a handle on prayer. Karl Barth details prayer like this. He says that to clasp the hands in prayer is the beginning of an uprising against the disorder of the world. See, I don't know what you think prayer is, but I think Karl Barth kind of calls us to see something quite magnificent of prayer. You see, he says that actually, as we see the disorder of the world around us, man, are we not living in that? As we see like the impact of COVID-19, as we see the impact of racial injustice, as we see the kind of level of uncertainty that countries, nations are living with at the moment, that we get to Gasp our hands together and, and to step in the gap and say, God, would you come and break in? God, this world isn't as it's meant to be. Would you step into the disorder that we see? You see, prayer is this unbelievable privilege, a privilege that we get to communicate with God himself. That through it, we get to be invited into the intimacy of knowing God and being known by him. 
of dependency, of knowing that he has everything that we need, and also of partnering with God, of seeing him break in to the situations uh, both in our lives and the lives of others around us, as well as situations that are beyond us. We get to partner with God in prayer of seeing him break through. And my hope as we go through this series is we're going to examine different uh, prayers that are prayed throughout scripture in order that it would strengthen us in our ability to pray, that we'll become more and more shaped as those who are living lives that are about prayer, that reveal what prayer is all about. Now, before we continue, I want to recommend a book to you. And it's a book by Pete Grieg, and it's called How to Pray. Now, ordinarily, whenever we recommend something at Oasis, we, if we were in person, we'd say, well, if it's good enough to recommend, it's good enough to give, give away. Now, this is a unique moment. This, this is the first time we've recommended a book online where we're not in person. So is it therefore not good enough to give away? Well, of course it's good enough to give away. However, the giveaway looks slightly different. And what I'm going to do in a moment is count to three. And when I get to three, what I'd ask you to do is I have three copies of this to send to three different people. If you would like one, I want you to type in quickly, I want one. So one, two, three. There we go. Immediately, we've got them. We will therefore take the top three and we will email you out this or rather send you out this week. Uh, a copy of that book. Now, for those of you who've not got that one, my hope is that you'll get past it. It is an exceptionally good book and it will do us good. Um, if we can stop doing the I want one now, that would be brilliant. Um, but in terms of this moment now then, I want to look at these wonderful verses that Becca read from Ephesians 3 that Paul wrote, which spells this magnificent prayer that reveals the wonder of who God is. And then the invitation that then is offered to us. And in it, I want to look at it under a title. And the title is this, that I believe it's a prayer of contemplation. And I think that's a great place to start in terms of prayer. See, often we think prayer is just coming with our shopping list. And yet actually, no, the starting point of prayer is one where we come to contemplate, to be invited into the depth and wonder of who God is. And what we discover is we get to understand more of who God is. It then shapes more of who we are. And I believe as we see that, it will then shape more of how we see we're to pray. And so as we look at this prayer of contemplation, it's going to be about God. It's going to be about us. And we're going to learn loads about how we pray. So then what do we see through this passage that Paul details? Well, I'd say that there's four things I want us to look at that I think Paul reveals in a prayer of contemplation. The first one is it's all about seeing. You see, Paul wants us to see the wonder of the God to whom we're coming to talk to, the God of whom we're coming to pray. See, if we're not careful, we can box God. We can start to limit who God is. And Paul doesn't want us to do that. Rather, he comes and says, look, you're not coming to an unknown or unknowable deity. Rather, we're coming to our Father, like one who's longing to reveal himself. Maybe you're kind of wondering who God is. Well, God is one who longs to father you. Now, for many of us, we say, no, we, we're followers of Jesus and we understand God is our Father. And yet sometimes we lose sight of that, that, that God is one we approach in the intimacy of relationship as children to a Father, a Father who's longing for us to know his love, his acceptance, his mercy, his kindness, and his goodness towards us. And so Paul says like the starting point is understanding that we come to our father. But in it, we could then start to think, well, God as a father is kind of like the best version of a father I can imagine. But Paul doesn't want us to limit then God as a father as he then couples it and says, no, this God who you're to see as a father is a God who created everything. He's one who has unlimited resources. Like, that's who we're to see. We're to contemplate and see the wonder of the one we come towards, who is our Father, who is the creator of everything, who has unlimited resources for you and for me. So we're to come contemplating who we see. First, secondly, we're to come contemplate by receiving. Paul says, that we're to receive 
continuously afresh by the spirit that Jesus is coming to make his home in your heart and my heart. Like, that's amazing that Jesus is longing to make home in our heart. You see, that's like a place of familiarity, isn't that God's coming to make us like some kind of prestigious building that is unsearchable and unknowable. No, no, it's like the familiar, it's the family, it's a home. See, Jesus is coming and longing to build home in our life. And that's what we get to receive through this prayer of contemplation is like coming and say, Jesus, would you come and continue to make your home in me? Because what that brings is confidence, a confidence that we're not alone. Jesus is with us by his spirit. It brings us comfort of understanding that this home that Jesus is creating in us is one is characterized by the life that he gives us. It's everything we've just looked at through living with uncertainty, which I'm sure you've printed out your sheets from that. If you haven't, go onto the website. You can find one of these to print out. But, but in it, we find that this home that Jesus is building within us is one that's characterized by peace and love and joy and rest and liberty and hope and just all the other stuff that's there. But it's there that he's coming to comfort us with this home. By this life is characterized by him. But it's not only confidence and comfort, it's also commitment that we get to receive daily the commitment that Jesus is going to keep building his home in us. He's not moving on, he's committed. So, this prayer of contemplation is about seeing, it's about receiving, it's also about knowing. That Paul says that we're invited into this venture of knowing the wonder of this God who is love. Not a God who can be loving, no, a God who in his very being is love. And so Paul says like, we're to be those therefore, that get to the adventure of mining, understanding, experiencing the wonder of God's love. And he, he kind of said like the, the whole full dimensions of it, the height, width, depth, breadth of his love, that's there to be searched out, to be experienced. That it's something that, yes, we get to understand with our minds, but also get to experience with our beings. That God is wanting to reveal the wonder of who he is as a God of love. And as we get to experience that, as we get to know it, it then shapes everything about who we are and how we then relate to others. So this contemplation prayer is about seeing, it's about receiving, it's about knowing. And then I say, lastly, it's about living. See, Paul says that as we seek to live in this prayer, it then causes us to know a life in full, a fullness of life, not like an empty, half measured life, no, a life that is completely saturated, full and satisfying. I came across this quote in the book that I've recommended by Pete Greig by a Franciscan priest called Brenning Manning. And in it, he says this, what if the hour you spend in the prayer room is when you refocus on Jesus so that you can carry his presence with you into the other 23 hours of the day with a heightened awareness that he is with you, he is for you, that he likes you, that he hears your thoughts. You see, please don't hear at this point in time like a condemnation or like, man, how am I going to do that? You're calling me to pray for an hour a day? No, no. I'm saying, what about if the minutes we spend each day contemplating who this God is as our father, unlimited in resources, of receiving afresh of Jesus who's making his home in our lives, of knowing and experiencing more of the wonder of God's love. If those moments of seeing that then begin to permeate the rest of our life. That's what this kind of Franciscan priest is pushing us to. Like, isn't that an invitation? Isn't that exciting? Isn't that a way to live? Like, this isn't some shopping list. This is a way that we get to refocus our whole lives that then causes in that moments we're spending in prayer to then permeate the rest of our life. You see, we're invited to be shaped by this living prayer, a prayer, prayer even of contemplation, a prayer where we get to see God as our father with unlimited resource. 
A prayer where we get to receive afresh daily that Jesus is making his home in your heart, in my heart. A prayer where we get to know and experience more of this God of love. And a prayer that then goes with us throughout our day, shaping how we live. So will you join me this coming week? What about if we committed each day to just use this prayer in Ephesians 3, just to pray into, to contemplate in those four ways for 15 minutes each day? Would you join me this coming week to do that? Maybe in small groups this week, you want to just like look at this and just talk about more of what you've got from it, these past, these verses and like how it's shaping your life more. I'd encourage you to be doing that. But for this moment, I just want to pray, would you be blessed? Would you see more of who God is? Would you receive more of who Jesus is making home in your heart? Would you know more of this God of love? And would your life be shaped more by him? I'm going to hand over now to Sarah, who's just going to lead us in a song as we reflect on all that we've heard. Okay, thank you for listening.
Thank you, Sarah. What a great song to round up um, a great morning and a great talk on the prayer of contemplation. It, it is true. God, Jesus is all we want. He is the all we ever need. And he is near. And he wants us to see him. He wants us to be receiving from him. He wants us to be knowing him. And he wants us to be living him each and every day. So, thank you, Sarah. We're now going to turn to a few things that are happening in the life of Oasis. If you're new in a, around Oasis, it's fantastic to have you with us today. And could I encourage you to go to our website, www.theoasischurch.com, and there you'll find resources and different ways of which you can get connected and also be able to sign up for the weekly email blast where there is a number of bits of news and information that's available to us. So if you're new around us, go to the website. Deb? Right, we've got quite a few things happening in our community this week. Um, I'm going to go through them, but as Vince said, you can find them on the website or on the weekly blast. So the first thing, which is really exciting, are daily devotionals are starting again tomorrow at 12 30 so that will be every day monday to friday so look forward to joining you with that um wednesday morning if you're an early riser 7 30 a.m um join us for half an hour of prayer uh, which vince will be leading um and then on thursday we've got two things happening at eight o'clock in the evening so one is our second week of Alpha. If you missed last week and you want to join in, that's fine. Just join in with that on Thursday evening. And the other thing that's happening on Thursday at eight o'clock is our um, Connect group, um, which is for people who may be new and wanting to get to know others. Join. Um, me with that on Thursday at eight o'clock and don't forget Friday um, our murder mystery which sounds really really exciting um, and something new that's happening that's starting today normally when we're at South Street after um, service is finished we all grab a tea and coffee and one or two or three biscuits and we chat uh, for as long as we want to. So I'm sure we've all really missed that. So today, when we finished at 11.30, you can go on to a link which will, is on the website or on the weekly bast and join us for grab your cup of tea, grab some biscuits and we can catch up and have a, a chat just like we used to. Um, so we'll be there so hopefully we will see some of you there afterwards right it'll be great just to pray together before we close our time lord i want to thank you for this morning i want to thank you for the way that you have spoken to us help us today and throughout this week to be contemplating you help us to to know that you are near help us to see you lord to receive you lord to know you lord and to live in you thank you lord that uh, 
if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And so we're excited in you, Lord. And so we thank you and we worship you and we'll commit everyone now to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. See you again next week, same time, same place, and same link. If you wanted to stay on the chat for a bit longer, we'll keep it running. If you want to say your goodbyes that way, and uh, remember the Sunday catch-ups, which Deb's just, just mentioned, and events that are available on the website. I think that's just about it. Uh, have a great week, everyone. Bye. Bye from me. See you soon.